Now let's back up even a little bit further. Not just counting is complicated. Number itself, the idea of quantity, is a highly complicated topic. Uh, one of my favorite stories uh, is often told by my colleague, Mary Hinesbury. She's a professor here. And she tells about being in a preschool classroom. And the kids were uh, lining up uh, around the rug. And the teacher was counting them to see how many kids there were in class that day. So she said, one, two, three. And the child she just counted said, I'm not three, I'm four. <laughs> And, and the child's right. The child was four, not three, right? But what do, what do we think that child understands about number? Well, we know that what four means is age, right? But can we be sure what that child really understands about fourness at this point? It could be as simple as that child thinks four goes with me. You know, three might go with someone else. 43 might go with my mom. You know, and, but I'm four. That might be it. Or it might be more complicated than that. They might have a sense that it means years or, or at least that it changes in an upward direction as time passes, right? So, so we're not sure. But clearly, <laughs> you know, the idea that numbers can be used in so many different ways uh, and that they are used in so many different ways in the world makes learning it a little more complicated. For example, you know, we have calendars, right? And we use number to keep track of the days of the month. Now, sometimes our months are 28 days long. Sometimes they're 30. Sometimes they're 31. And it, when we get to the end, we start over with one again. That's a little bit confusing. It's, it's good exposure to numbers. It's not, you know, harmful necessarily. But it's this strange example, OK? And if it was the only one, maybe that wouldn't be so problematic, but there are a lot. What about telephone numbers? What do the numbers mean in telephone numbers? Nothing, right? The thing about numbers is that it's an infinite set, OK? And it's highly systematic. And that makes it extremely useful. So we can use it to create individual identifiers, like telephone numbers. You know, my cell phone number, right, has this special number that belongs to me. It's amazing that we can do that with numbers. Um, but, but that means that when kids, just because kids are getting exposed to phone numbers, you know, along with all the other kinds of numbers in their environment, doesn't necessarily communicate a clear message to them unless we can help them sort it out or be aware of all the ways that they're experiencing number. Then we have clocks, right? A set of 12 that repeats, OK? It stops and starts again. And it's in a circle, just in case you, know, you weren't confused enough. And then there are all the different things that we measure using numbers, like temperature, like amount of money. What's that mean? What is money? Uh, and and then there are concrete things like length, OK? So there are all these different examples of numbers in kids' environment, which is great. And it does present them with opportunities to learn. But you can see how sorting it out can be a bit of a challenge. The last myth I want to talk to you about is the idea that teaching this stuff is easy because it's about the most basic math. Well, we've already talked about the math being not so basic. Um, but you understand, in principle, the idea is that if you're the teacher of the young kids, then the content is more simple now, and it's going to get more complex later. So it ought to be easier to teach. Um, what I want to point out is how teacher's knowledge is never that simple. Um, there's this guy named Lee Shulman who came up with this idea that there's such a thing as pedagogical content knowledge. Okay? It's this idea that there's content knowledge like we all have about math. And then there's the kind of math content knowledge that teachers have to have, and that it's a specialized kind of knowledge, that it includes information not only about the content itself, OK, not just all the things that we've been talking about about number, but also how you might teach some of those ideas to a child. You have to have ideas like putting out the unifix cubes in two different colors and setting up a six table. And you have to know whether the next day you should put out um, you know, the uh, 
put out the pattern blocks instead and keep the six table, or if you should have a five table instead with the unifix cubes. Okay, those are all sort of instructional choices that teachers have to be able to make with some kind of a, an idea, with a goal for the kids learning. And then you have to understand the kids. You have to know what kind of mistakes they're likely to make as they go on so that when you see the mistake, you know what it means. You know, there's that idea about the developmental trajectory with numbers, how at first it might be the series in a row, and then they might start getting the numbers out of order, one, three, five, seven, nine, right? <coughs> And that, in fact, that can be a step forward, depending on what's going on with the child's learning. That's not something that you and I need to know as we walk around in daily life. But it's specialized math-related knowledge that early childhood teachers need to have. 